Um, yes, sir. <coughs> collection and subsequent billing is done by the billing contractor. However, I would note that um, all of the turnovers in cash, in this case, the checks do get submitted through the collector's office. That's a legal requirement, and that practice would not change. So that the, the fees do, in fact, find their way into the process in that manner. How does the uh, question? Uh, how does the tax collector know that there's an outstanding invoice? She wouldn't have knowledge of that unless she received the reconciliation from the billing contract when the bills came in. But isn't that a problem that needs to be addressed? Um, I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily call it a problem. Well, it's like, you know, uh, a bunch of uh, invoices or billing uh, requests go to the billing contractor. And the town site doesn't know anything about it. No, they, they forward monthly activity reports to us that show the status of each and every claim. Okay, so she does get a copy of the status of claims. It's a monthly status report okay. that we receive to document any and all activities. Okay. So we just just to lie with that you, you look at what came from the chief and tell us it is a is a large balance carry forward. You know, it's growing yeah. a little bit. And I get part of that is the abatements and the charge off some should be taking so that sure. it should be as close to real real money as to what can be collected rather than what we're seeing in front of us which hopefully we're going to get to a point where we're going to clear it up we said that part of your, your goal to have a substantial outstanding ending balance here right if you look at the beginning balance from July 1st right. of 01 it's $168,000 which hasn't diminished at all in other words that, that's that's right. Because it wasn't taken off the books. It's not taken off the books, and it's actually grown. And then you'd have the 20%, the 80% collection rate in one year, and then you'd have a collection rate which is up in excess of 90 some odd percent. And then another 20%, 80% collection rate. And then again, a very high collection rate. So are we, not, are we talking about this now? Or we well, I'm just saying, it, it just in line with Bob saying, you know, is that collector really in a position to? They're at the books and, and, and have a true, and I, I don't know if the policy needs to address that. Other than well, you know, I guess what I was getting at is uh, <coughs> fire chief issues uh, through the chief's office, a, a bill is issued. He goes to the billing agent. So there's some shit or document that goes to the billing agent, creates a bill, goes to the uh, person who received the services or an insurance company or whatever. I was just wondering whether at that time it shouldn't be something that goes over to the collector's office saying you know, there's an outstanding something. Yeah, and it gets cleared is, with you know, the receipts as they come in. Uh, simultaneous billing. You know, I'm not trying to make extra work. I'm just trying to close the loop so things don't fall well, They must be coordinated somehow, as Bob suggested. How do they get coordinated? There's three different parties. There's the fire chief, there's the treasurer, right? Right. Collection, and then there's the collection agency. They must get reconciled somehow because otherwise the bill the collector would not get it, the five percent. Absolutely. Unless somebody reconciles. Who reconciles? It's done right now through the uh, the finance department and the billing company. They reconcile together yeah, the statements. Does the chief have the chief is never involved once the chief issues the issues the bills? The billing the billing department? Yeah. No, the issue the, the no, the tax company is not involved, not presently involved in that process. So it sounds as though the, the collection agency is reporting to us what's been billed and collected. Billed and collected. And so what rather than collected. the fire chief reporting to the collector what's been sent to the collection agency. Yeah. I don't know if, this, if the reconciliation is right. But that, no, it, sounds like, yeah, it sounds like there's a missing right. Miss yeah. link in there. Right. In other words, if, if I generate the, the if I generate the document, there ought to be some way to know that my, you know, that what I generated loops back to me, so I know what's been collected, what hasn't been collected, and I know that what I have indicated should be built has been built. Yeah. The good thing is that all the all the cash comes through the town hall, correct? Right. Through the collection. Yeah, that's the good yeah. thing. And so the collection it, it eventually gets reconciled. Gets paid. 
it sounds like it's late. Right? The billing agent gets paid from us based right. on activity, collections. activity collections. collections. Ability to collect. Yeah, it appears as though, based on what you've said, that the collection agency is telling the collector what they billed for, which has come from the fire department. See, this is where I think there's a, a little bit of a problem. And that is, and, and maybe there's enough of a timeline. The billing agent sends out a bill. The check comes into the town. The town collector may not know that the this what that the receipt is for, right? Because she hasn't received a report from the I think there's billing. always enough of a lack and that's not really an issue. It just seems I don't know. It would seem to me that the proper <coughs> approach would be that paperwork that leaves here that goes to the billing agent, a copy goes to the collector, and the collector now has on record the fact that there's a bill. And when the payment comes in, it's, she can tie it back to that bill and check it out. Yeah. Okay, I'll take that. I'll certainly take that. That's a good suggestion. Um, if I could, could just continue with sure. mind on uh, subsection E. Uh, ambulance rate schedule shall be reviewed annually as recommended by the fire chief, and um, that's your, the town bylaws specify that the rate schedule will be reviewed um, time to time, so we're committing to do it annually, but I think that the, uh, the month of September, if you'd like to keep it, that's fine. We're just going to be able to provide some flexibility. Sure. Uh, Mr. Vino. Yes, thank you, Mark. Yeah, um, I think personally I'd be more comfortable if we left what's there there and added that in or as recommended by the fire chief. Give us both options to in other words we're gonna review it in September. In if September we should look at as before or sooner then. Yeah, sooner or uh, say something changes six months later and maybe we should be looking at it, you know, give give, give both you and the fire chief. The option. That's my recommendation. Um, subsection F, the rate schedule for ambulance service should be designated to recover costs exclusive of labor to the extent possible. The town's rate schedule will generally reflect charges for ambulance service by other communities in the region. So that's new language that we inserted. That is, is that what should be driving it, or should it be what the insurance industry is paying? You know what I mean? For the, for the most part, I mean, we collect a little bit from people as far as deductibles or co-pays or something, but for the vast majority of what we collect is basically through insurance. That, and that, all, all the proposals that I've ever heard come before the board when we review these rates is based upon what current insurance company rates on Medicaid, Medicaid, you know, th that's what's driving what we can charge and what we can expect to, to collect. We've never established the rates on a basis of competing with other towns or what we're doing. And it's basically been driven by the industry and what's, what the reimbursement rates are. So I don't know if that's a, uh, I think a you're, reflection I think of you're what we're you know, as far as what, it's not really a true reflection of it as to what we've been doing and how we really base our rates. So I think what the, what the, uh, what it should probably reflect, if we're going to get that, that detail, is, you know, what the market rates for reimbursements by appropriate insurance and uh, federal, pay pro, state of federal and state programs reimbursable. That's how we've all, always established it. And at times we've been below it, you know, so we've brought it up. On occasion, we compared with what other towns have done. Well, those, those were always in relation some, to what the industry was going to pay. To some degree, all of the communities kind of focused on what they're going rates in. So, in a, in a particular region, I guess it all comes up on wash eventually, I suppose. But it's just that that's really not what we're doing. I mean, would you like to add at the end, um, in addition to that, my and insurance reimbursement rates? Tell me what you want. Uh, no, I, I, I mean, I, I, 
you know, I think that just because we'll I think that being something. more specific, be, you know, being more verbiage just makes it more confusing as to what we're really doing. And I think that you know, we, you know, we set the rates. I, I actually the sentence that's that's in there is is fine. I don't know that the new sentence it really adds that much to it at all. But I'm, I am okay with saying the region because. Theoretically, the region takes into consideration what the region will bear, what the you know market will bear, which is what the market is insurance. So I, I think it's like you know consistent either way. So I, I just wouldn't add any more verbiage to it. Well, I you know I, I would look at it then and make it even real simple. The rate schedule for annual and service should be designated to recover costs to the extent possible. Period. Take right. out exclusive or labor too. Because that suggests we do a cost. You're, you're right. Isn't In the it? extent it cost of cost analysis, analysis the going, we're not doing. What are the going rates? And uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll get the analysis from the department, the town administrator, as to you know, what's being charged around the area and what's being reimbursed by Medicaid, Medicaid insurance companies. And that's what we base our decisions on. And I have a fact. So uh, again, I agree. If we can simplify the policy, that will be so specific as to what we're going to tie it to. What was your suggestion in one? Just take the exclusive of labor out of there. Yeah, I agree. I agree as well. I think that's okay. And then it makes it, I don't have it in front of you, but it's a little bit of comparison. Sorry, a little bit of comparison with the computers and stuff like that, but in or out. Well, I mean, to the extent possible. Oh, right. Right. So, right. Right. you're going to go and look at the market. Right, I'm agreeing with you. So. Okay, so that's out. Out? Okay. Yeah. Um, G, G makes good. reference to exception section 8. What's that? What, we didn't know. We couldn't find that. <laughs> you find section 8? <laughs> we couldn't find section 8. We, 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 section 8, the service was yeah, good. Yeah, right? We, we, know, <laughs> we, we, we couldn't, couldn't find it because so keep in mind it was adopted uh, a number of years ago, almost 25 years ago. So along the way, section 8 no longer exists, so we didn't feel it was appropriate to keep that language in there. Okay. Um, Paragraph H has just simply been revised that um, to take into account insurance or workers' compensation. Because obviously if you have an employee that's been injured, um, one or both may end up paying. And then the, um, the other paragraph that was numbered here that uh, we made some changes to was the last paragraph. And that originally, for whatever reason in the policy, was um, misnumbered, but it says that the administrator is authorized to use appropriate means necessary to aggressively seek, seek to collect outstanding ambulance bills and may recommend the billing contract to undertake additional appropriate collection practices. So we put that language in there that does uh, provide for a degree of flexibility based upon direction that the board sets in terms of how we deal with what we term delinquent bills. Question on that? Mr. Beaman. Greg, does that mean we would be losing the option to go through small claims court? No, we just don't want to limit ourselves if that's the only option that we want. We okay, want to say that, that in? Well, it's, it's, it's in there, it's in the other means that the town has available to it. But there's no additional project. Right. Right, that would include that. The, uh, just the, 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 the language in relation to an aggressive contract that can't take in a small claims court. Well, uh, am I correct, though, Greg, the way Sorry. I read it? The contract would be taken in a small claims court, and they can't do that, right? It okay. has to be... It has to be authorized by the yeah. administrator. Oh, you can authorize I can, them I'm, to take in the small claims court? I'm the only one that can authorize that to take, to take place. Okay, I just want to show you all that option. That's up. No, that, that option has to be in-house. We can't delegate that response. I mean, we can we can direct the contractor to take those actions, but he's not going to take those actions without a specific direction from the administrator, Joe. Oh, okay. So the yes, contractor yes. can take from the small claims court on our behalf then? Correct, based upon oh, specific right. direction from us. Oh, I thought we had to do that. No, no, we can, we can, we can 
designated a contract to do that.